Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the Zero K 2v2 Anniversary Tournament. We are in the Losers Pre-Finals, or Round 4 according to Challenge. Langoustine versus Gregory Buzzy Beetle. Yes, that's apparently what it translates to, is Gregory Buzzy Beetle. I... I know my own limits when it comes to pronunciation. Anyway, we are... So, yeah, that's what we're doing. It's gonna be on Game 1, rather. It's gonna be on Moon... On Moon Q10X. See, like I said, I know my limits for pronunciation. I just can't even do the thing. Yeah, so Gregory Buzzy Beetle versus Lagosine. To realize probably should be bold. Sorry, I'm just trying to... Ooh, okay. It's a bit much. Uh huh. Nope. Sorry about this. I am just dealing with some issues right now with the way that OBS handles text. Sorry about that. But yeah, so we are moving on to that match that I mentioned. Gregory Buzzy Beetle. Versus Langostine. And we have... Like I said, Moon Q10X, which... Moon Q10X, which is a rather small map. As we were talking about small maps earlier, it's, it's, it is a small, small map. Small and creative hocked. I mean, it's... Actually, a map we haven't seen in a very long time. I, I think the last time I cast this map was in 2015 or 2016. Like, I have not seen this map in literally years. So, I mean, make it that what you will. I'm not really sure what to think about it right now, but hey, it's it's a map that exists. So that's that's cool. At any rate, we are going to be getting into very quick comp fights. Dime Front already pushing in here against whose commander is this? This is JXG's commander. But Dime Front on top of the fleas, like JXG forced to retreat. Not really what they can do with that. So Dime Front very very quickly able to get into the center. Like, Gregory Buzzy Beetle having no real resistance into the middle of the map. While at the same time, there's less can be said for Langostine, the better, since they're really not doing all that well, to be quite frank. And they're trying. Certainly, JXG is doing what they can to hold the fort, but I feel like at this point, there's not a whole lot they can do. It's really just going to come down to whether or not they're able to hold off the assault in the center, get the expansions there. And possibly also use that time to take a bunch of expansions along the side. Because there's a lot of expansions to take. If you're the southwest side, there are a lot of free metal extractions. The northeast side has to be that aggressive. Just look at the map is. This is not a symmetric map. The northeast side has to be more aggressive. These are the expansions that are kind of the equivalent for the northeast of these ones in the back to the southwest. So Langostine has that in their favor. They don't have to take the center. Gregory Buzzy Beetle does. So I would expect we're going to be seeing a lot more of an aggressive play from them, and I would expect if the center is taken, that it's still going to be a fairly even game. Although to be fair, Gregory Buzzy Beetle has expanded a lot faster. Gone to the back, taking the expansion there, taking some of the expansions around their main base, put some overdrive on. I mean, Gregory Buzzy Beetle, they're doing their best. They're doing what they can to actually do everything right. While, on the other hand... Langostine, they're expanding somewhat. They're reclaiming a fair bit. It just doesn't feel like their economy is anywhere near as much the focus. Or at least not at the beginning. Though we have seen a few games where one team had a very, very quick economic start and the other team just slowly caught up, never really let themselves lose too much in the process, and then ultimately won out. So this could be a similar situation, though to be fair, there is a Widow going around the map here that is potentially a problem. And we'll see how that goes sooner or later, but I think it'll... But I think it will be a problem. And this welder... No, the Weaver, no! Goodbye, Weaver. Or maybe not. The Weaver actually... Does the Weaver survive? No, the Weaver's not going to survive. There's no way the Weaver's going to survive. Flea's going to come in here and take it apart. Yeah. Oh, well. Good attempt, but that actually does mean it's going to be a lot harder to expand for Langostine. That's actually the biggest thing I was talking about. The Langostine was trying to set up some seemingly safe expansions over to the southeast and hasn't managed to really do that. Although the northwest, theoretically, is another option. I mean, they could go for that, too. And we are actually seeing JXG is going for exactly that. 
When I say GXG, I mean Nuzzy. Is going for exactly that with a couple of con of constables over the northwest. So there is that at the same time as Diamond's commander is doing a number on JXG, tearing apart JXG's commander. And as mentioned before, that is a big blow. If I mean JXG already lost a game in Baron just before by losing their commander. That's how they got knocked into the losers bracket in the first place. So don't want to have that happen again. However, there's the economic situation is not quite so dire. I mean, it's not barren. There's a bit more room to expand. But at the same time, a lot of that room is also being denied as this constable is forced to retreat. There's really not a whole lot they can do about that. Forced to retreat back off into, well, back to where they were. I mean, they can only do so much about that when they're being contested heavily by a bunch of glaives. They cannot fight other than slow beam. But hey, it does survive. So, give him that. So, whether the constable should be able to at least get in here, expand a little bit more, build a few more metal extractors. That's all they need. As long as more metal extractors are built, then it won't be especially difficult to hold on. And again, as mentioned before, it's not like this. It's not like the what is it called? It's not like the Gregory Buzzy Beetle can hold on. They can't just stay in the north. This is actually a really good position right now for. For sorry, I kind of have to risk the DCs, but for Langestine. Because Langestine right now, they are in the center. And as I mentioned before, that's the key thing. If they're in the center, they are going to be able to hold on. And if they can hold on, then they'll be fine. Like Langestine, all they have to do is hold the center, get that economy, make sure that their opponents can't work from their own defensive position, which isn't as strong, all things considered. I mean, there's a lot of reclaim, but that's it. But the problem, of course, is Langestine right now is not in a good economic position. They're not in a terrible position, but they're not in a good one. The reclaim is still going heavily in favor of Langestine, even though a lot of reclaim potential is right here. I mean, you got two weavers right here and 500 metal worth of reclaim. Like, a lot of stuff could go here that would really help out. I'm not quite sure why at least one of these weavers isn't helping out with the reclaim. Kind of wish it was. JXG not focusing enough on that, as far as I'm concerned. Granted, Nuzzy is at least setting a few metal extractors here and there, which is good. Setting up the metal extractors is relevant. That will equalize out the economy. And it's just a matter, though, of making sure that that economy actually does get built up solidly. And I feel it's so annoyed. I feel kind of annoyed. Like, this reclaim right here. Like, the commander's right here. I don't know why they aren't, the Weavers aren't going for it. I feel like they're... No, they're on patrol. If they're on patrol, they go for reclaim. They wouldn't just be repairing. I think I sort of get the logic of trying to repair the units to try to hold the line, but that isn't really working. And now the advantage is going back to Gregory Buzzy Beetle, especially as they're starting to raid out some of these expansions. Now, Jack Placeholder coming over to the top. And we've already seen what a Jack can do when it comes to actually tearing apart their opponent's base. So, Jacks are definitely a good asset to have here. But I gotta be honest, it does kind of feel like this is a bit of a desperation play. The placeholder will not be able to do much of anything. Jack not able to save it, able to get rid of one Lotus, not even getting rid of the Metal Extractor, which really, you gotta destroy the economy. That's the most important thing, especially as you lose the center, and you lose all the we all the Weavers in the center. That's destroying, I think this is it. I think Gregory Buzzy Beetle, it just attacked on all sides. They've totally outplayed Langestine when it comes to economy, when it comes to their defenses, when it comes to their attack timings. Everything has just been going entirely in favor of Gregory Buzzy Beetle. Langestine simply hasn't shown up. To be kind of harsh, but perfectly frank, Langestine hasn't really done much. Like they've done a bit of damage here and there, but they haven't prioritized the things that need prioritizing. They haven't prioritized economy. They haven't prioritized the command. They haven't prioritized stopping large military forces from getting in. They've prioritized you know, cheeky plays here and there, but even then it's only like cheeky plays that if they got a follow-up would work, but haven't really worked themselves. And now at this point, the center has been taken back by Gregory Buzzbeal. There's not a whole lot that Langestine can really do other than, I don't know, pray? <laughs> what else do they really have at this point? They have a red back, and even that is being overwhelmed by fleas. Not to mention the rest of the units coming in, the Reavers and Ronin and red back, or Recluses from Gregory Buzzy Beetle. And again, Langestine had a bit of an advantage when it came to their defensive position, but they never really managed to turn that into anything. And as a result, there's not a whole lot left other than to... Well, try, figure out what to do for game two, other than to think about what map they're going to pick for game two. Because right now, 
Game one, short of an absolute miracle, Langstein doesn't have really any way back in this. At least none that I can see. And just just in case a widow is also being set. I think this widow's was it used before? Not sure. Just being used to scout primarily. Possibly get rid of no, that's Okamoko's commander. It's Okamoko's widow, so they're not gonna go for it. So with that, there's not a whole lot left to work with. It's pretty clear that Gregory Buzzy Beetle has this game just about in the bag. Although Nuzzy, of course, still has a calm. Nuzzy always has a calm. Also, Nuzzy also has a widow they have to worry about that's gonna be sniping their calm. So, I mean, they can try. It's a valiant effort. Not gonna work, but you know, valiant effort. Certainly can't dispute that. But as for now, now it's just no. Gregory Buzzy Beetle little there. Not really gonna be able to hold. Not gonna be able to have a problem here. But Nuzzy's gonna try. They have a commander. They have a lightning rifle. Actually, I like that. They have a lightning rifle on the commander. That's good. Actually, I'm glad finally someone built a lightning rifle on their commander. It's a bit of a shame it happens when the game is already over. But I don't know. Yeah, out there. There's, there's a resign. There's a commander down. That is going to be it. That is game. And yeah, this map... This is a weird map. Like, this is one of those maps you kind of have to learn how to play specifically. Like, what to prioritize, when to prioritize, understanding the difference in terms of sides economies, how to expand yourself to make it work. Like, it was... It's just a weird map. And I think JXG, because they are a newer player, probably hasn't played it much. Like, Dying Friend and Hokomoko cut their teeth in this map. But, no, JXG and Nuzzy, if they're newer, just judging by the things, they're newer players. They haven't played this map very often. Because, like I said, it hasn't been a relevant map in years. Literally years. So I don't expect anything different. But, of course, there are still more games. I mean, there's still another, another match at least. You know, it's going to be the... What was it? So it's gonna be this this match. It's gonna be map two. Again, decided by JXG and Nuzzy. I mean, they picked this map too. <laughs> oh, that is the thing. Like it, JXG and Nuzzy chose Moon Q2 next. I'm not entirely sure why. But they did. So yeah, better try it again. Go for something maybe a little bit less awkward. Although, admittedly, their other pick was Insular Encounter, which I don't think anyone's ever played. Or it hasn't been played in tournaments. It certainly hasn't been played very much. It's... It looked more interesting. It was definitely more symmetric. Oh, they want Battle for Planet for 17. I almost called it 14. Why did I almost call it 14? XVII. 17. All right, well, we are on to... Okay. Well, I haven't seen this map in another... This is another blast in the past for me. Battle for Planet 17. So we're going to be moving... So, yeah, that's... Battle for Planet 17 is another asymmetric map. It's less kind of asymmetric than what we saw just now with... With... I can't remember the name anymore. With Moon Q10X. But... Yeah. I, I don't know. That was just weird. At any rate... We are into the next round, and I don't know. Battle for Planet 17? No, that's semis. That's totally valid. That's, that's allowed. Huh. 
<sighs> All right. So at any rate, it's kind of funny because the players in chat are going about how the map was too wild, and yeah, they're going for Planet for Planet 17 after going for Moon Q10X. Like the two asymmetric maps that actually had some playtime back in the day. I don't understand the logic, but sure, why not? Go for the great, go for the wild maps. I mean, it might work. Probably won't, but hey, it exists. You, you could. I don't know where. Where's Don Hokomoko? Seriously, where are those people? Oh, there is a Battle for Planet 14. Okay, that that might be why I was confused. But Battle for Planet 17 is the only one I've ever seen. Or I think Battle for Planet 14 I saw exactly once. I think it's a g really huge map, like some giant eco map, I want to say. I, I mean, it might not be, but I feel like it was like this giant economy map that was all about having a massive amount of resources. I think I only saw it with Evolution RTS, actually. I don't even saw it in 0K. Anyway, we, yeah, so this is it, like, if you want to know what the heck it was, this is, this is the map. It's, it's weird, it's got this giant ridge in the middle. The two start points are largely focused around this metal extractors and these metal extractors. So you gotta play around with that, usually people start around here, other people might start in the center, I don't know. Certainly not that advantage of shields. It, it, yeah, there's cliffs, but they're not very high, so you're going to have a much better time with shields than you would with anything else. Ooh. Huh. So I expect we're going to be seeing shields, because of course that's meta, and it works well on this map. Possibly going to see gunships or air or something? Wouldn't surprise me. Back in the day, this used to be like a map where you get oftentimes like cloaky be shield, or like shield at the top, or it's cloak at the top this time. So yeah, that's that's a thing. There's the map. There's the game. We have started. We have shields and jump bots for Langustine, and Gregory Buzzy Beetle decides to go for Cloaky and shields. All right then, no surprises whatsoever. Cloaky shield with early builders coming in from Dimefreund. While Sando and Langustine, we have not a lot of early, well, early puppy coming in here from JXG. Well, Nuzzy going for early bandits. Nuzzy going heavy aggressive. Well, not heavy aggressive. More aggressive. But yeah, everything Gregory Buzzy Beetle is just make all of the economies. Build all the metal extractors. Make all the power plants. Actually, I think power in this... What was wind power in this level? 0 0.2... 0 0.0... No, wind is terrible in this map. Just double checking. I couldn't remember. So we're only going to really see solar plants because wind does nothing. But hey, it's a thing. So it exists. You might as well give it a shot, I suppose. But yeah, it's not going to do much good. That being said, see, the thing with this map is because of the way the ridge is set up, the north side kind of has this weird defensive position, and the south side, they've got to be aggressive. Like, they've got to really push in hard, because otherwise the north side is going to take a, th a third of the map for free. And that's really where the issue comes in, is that if the north side gets that third of the map, there's not a whole lot you can do against them. Like, they're, they've kind of got the thing in the bag. Okay, Pyro Puppy, however, is trying to come in here, deal some damage. Well, same time... Where the heck is that? Ah, there it is. Same time, Bandit's coming in, tearing apart... Oh, two of these! Nuzzy, all of their constructions have been destroyed. Bandit rush very early on. Very surprising Bandit rush from Hokomoko. Same time, the Pyro Puppy is not as effective by any stretch. I mean, Langustine lost... They lost a lot of stuff here, but, you know, they can reclaim. They can at least get that set back up, and not the worst setback. Same time, able to build their economy, but, yeah, again, they have to be aggressive, though. That's the problem. This entire time, they're going to... Langustine is going to need to push. Gregory Buzzy Beetle can just build up. They can get their economy. They can get 30, 40 metal per second, not to worry about anything. Langustine can only really... They have to spread out a lot just to even get 30. And there's the power coming in to do, try to do exactly that. Setting the metal extractor on fire that should be enough to kill it. 
Uh, there he goes. Metal Extractor burning down. But at the same time, not a whole lot of other damage is done. And the counterattack coming in here. Another Metal Extractor goes down for Langustine. Although at a slight advantage in the moment. But still, it's very, very slight. I would say overall economically it's fairly even. Though. That's the thing. It's just a matter of the army. And right now, Gregory Buzzy Beetle is winning on army count. They've got it. It's just, that's the thing. Is you got to deal with that fact. Although the scuttle as well. Oh! Okay, this is interesting. Are we going to see a scuttle snipe on the commander? Granted, we saw a scuttle last game. They didn't really... No, not last game. A few games ago. They didn't really do much until really, really, really late in the game. So that might be the play. Like, set up the scuttle until way later in the game to kill the commander. Or possibly earlier in the game to kill the commander. I'm not really sure. May not even matter, though. Scythe's coming in here, taking on a couple of metal extractors. Like, really forcing some of the defensive play, but unfortunately not defenses enough in time. Not enough defenses in time enough. Instead, forcing Terraform out of them. So, okay, the thing with Terraform is that it's not free. It's not the cheapest thing in the world, especially for this map. It's a pretty soft map, but it, it's not free. Oh, Scuttle, though, is not a bad idea. Getting rid of Commander, nicely done. Wiping out Hokomoku's Commander as they're trying to be a little bit over-aggressive with it. So, good play. This is the sort of prediction I'm talking about. I mean, Lagostine has an idea that Gregory Buzzy Beetle is probably going to push in with the Commander at some point pretty quickly. Get other heavy units. Get that Scuttle out in time. I mean, the Scuttle is 800 metal, but... Er, wait. Sorry, 550 metal. Scuttle is 550 metal, but getting rid of a commander like that is totally worth it. Now, Langustine, for the first time, is the one that has their commander, or has the advantage of commanders. That an extra commander economy, and that's actually even things out. Both teams at 30 metal per second because of the commander. Now, granted, again, Gre Gregory Buzzy Beetle has a more defensible position, and thus does have more of an economy for them. So, aggression is still the word of the day for Langustine. But at least they have a position where they don't have to worry as much about economic disparity because they have both their commanders, at least for now. And to be fair, there's not a whole lot threatening them. But again, Langustine is going to have to be more aggressive than they are right now. I mean, they're not, it's not bad, but they're clearly building heavily for defenses. And especially as the scythes are coming in to try to completely nullify everything that's been gained, it doesn't look good for Langustine. Gregory Buzzy Beetle, they got a commander kill. They got, they got a factory kill set up here. Scythes coming in here are not going to be stopped before they kill the factory. The Shieldbot factory is going down, and nothing around here is set up to do anything about it. The Pyro finally kind of come in to deal with it, but it's not enough. One scythe sacrifices itself so the other, can, the other five can get away. And that is a dead Shieldbot Factory for the cost of a single Scythe for one for 250 metal. Totally worth it. Not to mention getting rid of a Pyro for basically free. This was an amazing shot for Gregory Buzzy Beetle. They are still way ahead in terms of economy. In terms of production, they're absolutely on top. I mean, the Caretakers for one of the factories, the Convict on the other factory, Jump Bot Factory for Langustine is the only one that's actually producing anything, and it doesn't have anything to produce with. I don't know why they're going for storage either. The commanders are not dead, or even threatened for that matter. At the very least, the commanders can at least use that to turn into better commanders. Nuzzy upgrading their commanders to make use of it. I mean, they always... Nuzzy has a commander! It's always worth noting, Nuzzy will be the first to tell you they have a commander. So, Nuzzy's got this. They got the commander, they got the lightning rifle, which I'm very glad to see, because the lightning rifle is underused, in my opinion. And the factories can be reclaimed and rebuilt, and the caretakers are going to be built up to help rebuild the factories, which is amazing, because if the caretakers are built up, once the factories are built up, then the factories can then be used with the caretakers to really burn all this money. There's a lot of an economy being pulled in, though a lot of it is, you know, reclaimed here. Probably not the best time to reclaim, unless Nuzzy decides to upgrade the commander again, which they probably should. Or, you know, build up caretaker and then build up the factory. Caretaker, then factory, is actually faster. It's five seconds faster to do it that way in total. So I don't think a lot of people know that or are doing it that way. And it may not even matter because at this point, Langustine, despite their best attempts, having lost both of the factories, was the, still the killing blow needed. This should still be it. But again, Nuzzy still has a commander. They still also have the factory being built up. And enough of an economy, that actually isn't a big deal. Like, Langustine is not behind economically. Oh, Mega Blaster in chat, thank you for pointing out there's correcting me. Terraform is apparently not dependent on map softness. Just the amount of damn, or just the amount of terraform required to fix things after projectiles hit the ground. That's what Maps Office determines, and I was wrong about cost. 
But yeah, Terraform isn't super expensive, not super cheap. The point, my point I was making with the Terraform thing is that that might be a waste of cash. Like, there might be better uses of metal, although to be fair, it has helped quite a bit when it comes to harassment. So maybe it's worth it, actually, just to keep that extractor alive or other things alive fast, other things alive longer. Heck, Terraforming is a pretty integral part of the game. There's a lot you can do with it that really isn't done. So yeah, it's actually really useful. But Terraform or no, the commander is dead. JXG has lost their commander, so the disparity is real. Nuzzy has their commander, however. Nuzzy has a commander. Has a lightning rifle, has extra build power. And has a proxy cloaky factory, which might do some good. Hard to say. No, no, it won't. It's going to try to deal with the scythe, but does not manage to. At this point, with the amount of economies there, or lack thereof, it's it's pretty decisive. I'd say... I'd say Gregory Buzzy Beetle has this in the bag. Maybe it's just me, though. Maybe I'm being pessimistic. No, nope, that's it. Nuzzy does not have a commander. Nuzzy no longer has a commander. That is probably game. That is game. That's definitely game. That is game. That is tournament. That is... Dime frame lagging out? Okay, cool, but doesn't matter. Nuzzy and JXG throw in the towel for the last time in this tournament as Gregory Buzzy Beetle moves on to the Losers Finals. If anyone complaining about matchups earlier in the tournament, you can stop because... Okay, I haven't quite gotten to the point where Gregory Buzzy Beetle is back to fighting against the endgame boss, but they're up against North Chilean G and RAR. So yeah, there's that. So North Chilean G and RAR against Gregory Buzzy Beetle is going to be the up is the lower bracket finals. Once that's done, then that's gonna be it, basically. Oh, you're gonna be uh, that in the grand finals. So yeah, the lower bracket finals will be up in a few minutes, so stay tuned. We'll be back with that as soon as it is made. Which admittedly, yes, I realize it was a bit of a long break for those watching on Twitch. Took a little while for the last game to be organized, literally long enough for me to order movie tickets. I am not joking. I'm also gonna be up really late tonight, but I wanna have a nap after this, because the movie had to get a 10.55 showing. Anyway, be back in a couple minutes. Or possibly 10. Depends how long it takes.